Christmas and welcome to our Christmas online service. I would just like to start by reading our land acknowledgement because as we worship the Lord today we want to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Mississauga of the Credit First Nations people. And 
it is now home today to many diverse uh, First Nations, Native, Indigenous groups, including the Inuit and the Métis and all the other First Nations people. We also want to acknowledge how important it is that Young Street Mission feels uh, truth and reconciliation is essential with our Indigenous people. Um, we are also covered by Treaty 13 that was done with the Mississauga of the Credit people. And we acknowledge that we are allies and take part in the act of reconciliation, honoring the Creator and the land and the Indigenous and heritage of Toronto. Hello everyone, Merry Christmas. It's nice to be with you on this day via video. And today I'm going to be lighting the Christ candle. Um, the past several weeks we've been lighting the other candles throughout Advent. We started off with the hope candle, then the peace candle, the joy candle, and the love candle. And before we light them, I'm just going to read from Luke chapter 2, the first 20 verses. It goes, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. So on this most holy day, Christmas day, we light all four of the candles in our Advent wreath, the hope candle, the peace candle, the joy candle, and the love candle. And now we light, or should I say turn on, the Christ candle. And as we do that, we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in the manger. So let's pray together. Gracious and mighty King, we celebrate your goodness to us as we join the triumph and joy of Christmas. As your love has been revealed in all of its fullness, we pray that love may abound in our hearts during this special day. Grant us the Spirit of Christ that we may live in the fullness of His character every day. And it is in His name that we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. On Christmas Day, we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we all know that Mary and Joseph had to go down to Jerusalem for the census. And when they got to Jerusalem, there were no rooms. There was nowhere for them to stay, so they had to go on to Bethlehem. And now I'm reading from Luke uh, chapter 2. 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all of the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, clothing, lying in a manger. And then suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the heavens and on earth, peace to all those on whom his favor rests. Let us worship. We sing in jubilation.
the first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep in a cold winter's night that was so deep no Gracious God, we thank you for this day, Christmas Day, a day that reminds us of the birth of your Son, the Lord Jesus, who came to save us. Lord, we just pray for the rest of the service. We pray for all those who are watching today, that they will just feel your presence in a significant way, Lord, um, that Christmas will just wrap around them in such a, a way, Lord, that they've never experienced before. May all really come to that realization of what today is truly about. It's about us remembering your birth. And Lord, we just pray for the rest of the service. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Thank you. Let us pray together. Holy God, we come to you on this Christmas day, grateful, Lord, for all that you are doing in our lives, 
all the ways in which you are showing yourself to be faithful and true and abounding in love and goodness. And we thank you that you showed that to us in the incarnation, in the choice of the Christ to come to earth, to dwell among us, and to come in such a fragile form as an infant even, and grow up on this planet, and then teach your heart, teach uh, the word of God to us, Lord, and demonstrate through miraculous uh, powers, demonstrated uh, through uh, healings and such, Lord, and then to willingly go to the cross to suffer for us in order to reconcile us to you, Lord. This story is, is huge and it is true and it is the thing that has transformed our lives and is continuing to transform our lives. So I pray that by your spirit, Lord, you would be at work in each of us, Lord, as we continue to serve you, as we continue to uh, acknowledge you, as we continue to confess and and just keep turning to you, Lord, and, and as we just look to you as as the one who is the the author and finisher of our faith god you are good and we love you and we delight to honor and serve you so may we do that lord this christmas season may we do that father uh, throughout the year lord and may this year for each of us god be a year where there are fresh new beginnings and we have a new uh, energy and new desire to draw near to you father so that we might uh, be really led by your spirit and empowered god to serve you faithfully and to listen to you carefully as you call us also lord to enter into into your love lord as we would be the hands and feet of christ on this planet. We bless you, God, this Christmas. We thank you for uh, your abundant love for each person. In Jesus' name, amen. It is now time for announcements. Pastor Arlene, our associate pastor, has been licensed with the Evangelical Missionary Church of Canada for two years. Her next step is ordination. We are seeking congregational input into her ministry among us. Please speak to Pastor Matthew by January 7th regarding any comments you would like to share regarding Pastor Arlene. Sunday School starts up again on January 8, 2023, provided during church service, ages 5 to 12. For more information, email cadam at ysm.ca. God loves a cheerful giver. As part of our worship on Sundays, when, in per, when we're in person, please put your tithes and offerings in the box at the back of the church. Or you can Google give.ysm.ca slash CADM to give today online. Our recovery group will resume on Sunday, January 15th at 4.45 p.m. Sunday, Adult Bible Study. Come join us. Sunday starting January 8th at 4.30 p.m. YSM Takeout Meals. Available every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. at 270 Gerard Street East. Trauma and Transformation Level 1 Group. January 10th through February 28th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at 306 Drive Street East. Register with Caron at extension 3206 or bridges at ysm.ca. Winter Wellness Workshop. January 18th through February 22nd from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Bridges Spaces. Men's Bible Study will resume on Wednesday, January 4th. Co-ed parenting support groups. Parents of children, children from zero to 18 years old support family goals, break isolations, acquire parenting resources. It's a six week in persons Thursdays from January 19th to February 23rd, 2023, and this will be from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Davis Center at 270 Gerard Street East. 
Register by January 13, 2023. Facilitator Peter A. and Karen, and it's at 416-929-9614 at extension 3206 or at bridges at ysm.ca. Transformation and child care can be provided. Thursdays at 10.30 a.m., Bible Studies Online resumes on Thursday, January 5th. Trauma-Informed Art Therapy Group. No art skills needed. Only basic art materials. Open participants can register at any time during the season, ages 18 and up. And that's Thursdays weekly from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. To register, call 416-355-3568. The food bank opens back up on January 4th and Meals to Go will resume on January the 5th. Every Saturday at 5 p.m., our friends at Church in Regent Park serve dinners here in the gym. Hala Hala and vegetarian meals are available. Invite your friends. That is it for the announcement for this week. Our scripture readings today are from Luke chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 2. The first reading is Luke chapter 2 verses 2 to 11. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The second reading is from Matthew 2, verses 2 and 3. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. And this is the final reading, the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 28, and then Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 38. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming to them, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Merry Christmas! Today is one of the most important days of the year for the Christian because we remember the incarnation, which means to become human. It may not have happened on December 25th, but it's a day that we set aside where we can remember that God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son into the world to be human and to give his life for the world. This is a big deal for our faith. And I'd like to share with you why today. I don't know if you're a royal watcher, but if you don't know, Prince Harry of England married American actress Meghan Markle in 2016. Sadly, she was treated so bad by the UK press with inequality and racism that it caused her mental health to suffer with depression and suicidal thoughts. Her pleas for help were ignored from the institution, and Prince Harry did what a loving husband would do, which is to separate his family from the toxicity. So not only did Prince Harry leave his royal status, his title, but also the security and the power and the riches that came along with it. This is a sacrificial act of love. And yet it's similar to an act of love that someone sacrificed for you and for me. Philippians 2 says, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. 2,000 years ago, the Son of God came to the world and was born in the most unroyal way. God had the right to be born in a palace in the most royal way, to a mother with royal status, and have a baby shower with the most exclusive guests. But that's not the way that God chose to arrive to this world. Just as a royal wedding today has politicians, other royals, and enter entertainment artists, I imagine royal events in the past would have also had the same type of guests. But God arrived to this world in a low-key manner that invited a group of not-so-exclusive guests to Jesus' birth. And this implies something about our God King, Jesus. Let's find out what that is as we take a look at the guest list of his royal birth. Let's start with the guest who would actually give birth to the royal. Mary and Joseph, low-income couple. Matthew 1. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, but what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from sins, all their sins. All this is to take place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Mary and Joseph were just an average engaged couple that loved God. This young woman, Mary, was chosen by God to conceive Jesus in her womb before she was actually married. Mary obeyed and dedicated her womb for the Messiah. Joseph was the chosen to be stepdad to the Son of God. He had the right to leave Mary because she was pregnant with a baby that wasn't his before they got married and he was actually planning to leave her, but God spoke to Joseph and he accepted Jesus as a son and Mary as his wife. These two average folk who gave birth to Jesus in a barn and who had a low income offering to give when Jesus was born were the ones that God chose and they responded with obedience. 
they RSVP'd yes to the invitation. Next on the guest list were the minimum wage workers on the night shift. When the pandemic hit this world, the workers who clean, stock the grocery stores, grow our food, and drive our buses became essential. They made our world keep going round when everything else shut down. The essential workers of Jesus' time were shepherds. They oversaw sheep, which were used for food, clothing, and religious sacrifices. During their night shift, God sent them an invitation they would never forget. Luke 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will have a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. These shepherds got the fanciest invitation ever. Angels appeared to them to announce the birth of the Messiah, the awaited one. You know how amazing live music is? Humans are drawn to it. It's hard to ignore. These shepherds got a first row seat to a heavenly choir praising God. I can't even imagine how astounding that would have been. And how did the shepherds respond? They obeyed God and left their job for the night to see the God King. They RSVP'd yes to the invitation. Next on the guest list were two devoted worshipers, a godly man named Simeon and a prophetess named Anna. The Holy Spirit told Simeon that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. On the day that Mary and Joseph went with baby Jesus to the temple to give an offering. Simeon was led by the Spirit to the temple and he held baby Jesus and praised him. Luke 2, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory for your people, Israel. Anna the widow and prophetess who lived in the temple responded this way to baby Jesus when she saw him. Luke 2, coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Imagine being so in tune with the Spirit that they were able to recognize baby Jesus as the Messiah. And what was their response? They worshipped him the moment that they met him. Anna and Simeon responded with obedience and praise and prophecy. They RSVP'd yes to the invitation. Next on the guest list were the foreign scientists. There were men from Persia who dedicated their time to analyze the sky, the stars, and space. Some call them astrologers, and others call them astronomers. Tradition calls them the three wise men. In reality, we don't know how many there were. All we know is that they were mesmerized by a unique star in the sky. They studied the star and followed it because they knew it would take them to a special king. Although they didn't come from a nation that believed in Yahweh or the Bible, they believed in the words of prophecy foretelling of a royal king's birth, which is Jesus. They followed the star for months, and some believe even years, which led them to Jesus. If you think a baby shower should just be all women, think again. This New Testament baby shower was organized by men. They showered baby Jesus with three gifts, and they were very generous and actually provided for Jesus' family while they were refugees in Egypt, running from King Herod's decree to kill baby boys. What was the response of these rich pagan scientists? They looked for the truth and they found it. They RSVP'd yes to the invitation. These were the main guests to Jesus' birth. I think it's also worth mentioning that someone had planned to crash Jesus' birth. 
To our human logic, a king would be invited to a royal birth, but in heavenly logic, that's not the case. When King Herod heard the Magi were going to visit the King of the Jews, he pretended that he wanted to visit Jesus too, to worship him. But God warned the Magi in a dream to not tell King Herod where Jesus was, and they obeyed. Because King Herod was threatened by baby Jesus, he decreed to kill all boys from zero to two years old. This is why Jesus, Mary, and Joseph had to seek refuge in Egypt. King Herod was not invited to the birth of Jesus because his intentions were anti-Christ. Ironically, Jesus had come to also die for King Herod. Although Herod wanted to kill him, Jesus had come to lay down his life for him and for sinners like him. John 1 says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. The world didn't recognize him though. He came to that which was his own, but his own didn't receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, children born of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of husband's will, but to born of God. Christmas seems to be the only time of year where Christianity is still allowed to pervade society without too much rejection. Christmas is a time where we talk about baby Jesus and who doesn't love a baby? Little does the world know that that baby is the answer to the world's suffering, pain, and purpose. Jesus left his heavenly royalty to become like us to become human, to become the representative of humanity, to die in our place for our sins. And those who believe in him are given the privilege of becoming his family. Believers become children of God. Hear ye, hear ye, you have been invited to believe in the Son of God so that you can become a child of God. How will you respond? Will you RSVP yes to the invitation? Will you respond with obedience and acceptance to God's invitation? If you don't know Christ as your Savior, this is your invitation. This is your sign that He wants a relationship with you. If you already know Jesus as your Savior, we are to continuously await His promises to be fulfilled in Scripture like Simeon and Anna. Let's remember His first coming and faithfully await his second coming. May the peace of Christ pervade your entire being this Christmas. Let's praise our God, King Jesus, because he is the reason for the season. I'm continuing on from uh, Luke chapter 2. After the angels had left the shepherds and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in a manger. And when they seen him, they spread the word concerning what had happened and the news about the child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. And Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and they had seen, which were just as had been told. Let us continue to worship. Right. 
But as the hunter braves to night, an angel song round loud and high. Jesus, your King is born. Jesus is born in excelsis gloria. Sons of men, it too. The holy child of earth and heaven was born today for you. Come kneel before the radiant boy who brings you beauty, peace, and joy. Jesus, your king, is born. Jesus is born in excelsis. Time is not so round and fair as was the reign of glory on the helpless infant there. The chiefs from far before him knelt with gifts of fox and beaver pelt. Jesus, your king is born. Jesus is born. In excelsis gloria, Jesus your King is born, Jesus is born, in excelsis gloria.
Gracious God, we just thank you. We thank you for this glorious day. We thank you that we were able to come together, even though online, and just remember uh, the significance of this day. Lord, we just pray that you draw close to to each person, Lord, that they really, truly sense your presence, Lord, and that we just really realize that the greatest Christmas gift we could ever have or want is you, and we have you, and so we thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray your blessings upon all of those that may be going through difficult times, Lord, that you draw close and bring comfort. We thank you for the message today, and Lord, we just pray for the upcoming um, holiday time, Lord, that it is a time of safety for people. And Lord, that you continue to provide and draw close to people, especially all of those who may be struggling. And Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for sending your son to us, and we give you glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. And I would just like to wish you um, blessings for the rest of this day and for this uh, time of holiday season. And I just pray, Lord, uh, I just pray that the Lord will bless each and every one of you in um, ways that are unique, that you know it's the Lord. And uh, draw close to him and just, re you know, put on some Christmas carols today and just listen to those beautiful hymns of you know the lord it's just such a blessing i just love my christmas music so um we wish you a happy new year uh, new year and we are back in person next sunday so hope to see you then god bless <music>